I will call this meeting to order. It's the regularly scheduled meeting of the Transportation and Public Works Committee. I'm the committee's chair, Councilman Reich. I'm joined by my colleagues, Council Members um, Johnson, Bender, Fletcher, and Gordon. We are quorum and we'll proceed with today's agenda. On today's agenda, uh, we have 16 items, uh, one of which is discussion, the remainder are consent. I'll go through the consent items in order. Uh, Council member can, on the committee can pull an item for further consideration um, as they see fit. Uh, item one is the West Broadway Improvement Special Service District 2018 Operating Plan and Budget Amendments. Item two is the Special Service District's 2019 Assessment Setting the Public Hearing. That public hearing will be October 9th, 2018. Um, contract Amendment with Lamedi and Sons for Lindale Avenue Outfall Improvements. Uh, that's an increase of that contract. Item four is a contract amendment with Meyer Country can uh, incorporate for the Anderson School Improvements Project. Uh, item five is the uh, contract amendment with Kimley Horn and Associates for additional professional services for the Hennepin Avenue Reconstruction Project. Item six is the contract change with LS Black for caulking and boom cleaning services at the Fridley softening plant. Item seven is the contract with CDM Smith for industrial electrical engineering, planning, design, and construction services for upgrades to that same plant. Item eight is the 4th Street Southeast uh, Lighting District and the designation setting the public hearing. Um, that public hearing is for October 9th, 2018. Item nine is the 18th Avenue Northeast Trail Gap an easement agreement. Uh, that will knock out a pinch point of that route that we're incrementally uh, providing for the public over the last decade. Um, item 10 is the agreement with the Canadian Pacific Railroad Utility Oc Occupancy License. Item 11 is the 2018 Capital Improvement Program Appropriation Revenue Adjustments for the City's Capital Projects. Item 12 is the Agreement with Canadian Pacific Railroad at 26th Avenue North Street Reconstruction Project. Uh, item 13 is the Mid-City Industrial Reconstruction Project Cooperative Agreement and Easements. Item 14 is the Easement and Permit Agreements for the Replacement of the Water Main Crossing at the Mississippi River. A uh, pretty major project there. Item 15 is the North Loop Paving Project, amending resolution for variance of the state aid rules. Those are the 15 uh, consent items. Does anyone wish to pull them for further discussion? See not, I'll move all items as submitted. All in favor say aye. All right. Consenting name. Those items carry, and we now find ourselves at the discussion. Uh, good morning, Director Hutchinson. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Um, as you know, our uh, department has been working on uh, fleet electrification starting years ago with a, a more broad plan and then last year with more of an implementation strategy and now this year with some um, key advancements. I'm introducing Brett Jelly, who's the Director of Business Administration for Public Works, who is taking the lead on this for Public Works and he has a short presentation for you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, committee members. My name is Brett Jelly. I'm the Director of Business Administration and Public Works. I'm here this morning to present two action items and also give an update related to the city fleet electrification plans. Last fall, this committee heard a presentation from the department and our consultant AECOM about the feasibility of transitioning city fleet to electric vehicles. This study evaluated the costs and benefits. It also looked at uh, the environmental benefits of making that conversion. The study recommended some uh, next steps, and I think it's a good time to just check in on what's happening around uh, the recommended next steps. So the, the study said that we should monitor electric vehicle usage in winter months, that we should monitor potential sources for outside funding, and that we should monitor industry uh, progress on electric vehicles. So on, on those grouping of items, our Chevy Bolts uh, had a good winter. Um, they have such a strong range that even with colder weather and diminished battery performance, they still meet our operational needs. So that was really good news. Uh, the potential sources of funding, um, the red language you see is actually in addition by me because as we've been working on this, the charger side of this uh, implementation is really important. And, and that's actually uh, something that's happening and why I'm here today. Uh, and then industry progress with electric vehicles, our fleet department's really plugged into national trends and are, is kind of watching where that is going. On the prepare side, we have to prepare our infrastructure. Um, that's a really key component to making a conversion. Uh, and that primarily is about charging stations and then our, our maintenance staff, and then review vehicle replacement approach for new electric models. And that kind of connects back to the study and the different scenarios that were evaluated. 
again, so this slide kind of also gives a higher level framework picture um, of our fleet electrification efforts. So last fall, we presented the AECOM fleet conversion study. Uh, this kind of gave us a broad based uh, overview of uh, possible approaches on conversion options. The second item is ch charging planning and build out. So in 2018, and looking forward, we've been spending a lot of time on the charging, building a charging system that can support our city fleet operations. Third item is the Green Fleet Policy Update. The city adopted uh, a Green Fleet Policy in 2010. We are in the process of updating that, and I'll actually talk about that a little bit later. And we are currently have been, as uh, was mentioned in an electric vehicle kind of early adopter phase. So we're taking advantage of opportunities to get electric vehicles into the fleet when it works and makes sense. Uh, but eventually we wanna move into more of a conversion plan, which will be uh, more robust and um, kind of probably a faster implementation of our of electric vehicles. So on the charging planning and build out, there's a lot happening right now. Uh, we have somebody actively working on creating a master plan around uh, charging needs at city facilities. So that involves looking at which vehicles would be converted first, where are they located, and planning how many chargers do we need and starting to get some ballpark costs so we're ready to jump on opportunities like uh, Volkswagen Grant. The second item is the XL Energy Pilot. That is one of the action items associated with this um, request for council action. We, uh, and there's been a multi-departmental team talking to XL Energy about the city's fleet electrification needs specifically around charging. And that has helped inform an Excel Energy proposal that will be going to the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission this fall. And we are part of that pilot and the MOU that we're recommend or asking authorization to sign essentially says that the city and Excel Energy have shared goals, that we are have been participating in this uh, pilot conversation. We're supportive. And uh, I think this will help Excel Energy as they move forward and get approval for their pilot. Uh, one note, we this is kind of early in that process. If, when we get to the point of actual participation in the pilot and building things, um, there will be other actions that will come forward with more details. The third item is the Volkswagen settlement grant. So as you may know, Volkswagen cheated uh, pretty significantly on emissions and had a $15 billion settlement with the US government. Minnesota and the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency is managing a grant program, $47 million came to the state of Minnesota. Um, as part of that uh, grant program, there is an opportunity that's open right now for level two charging. If we're successful uh, in our grant application, it will result in two dual ports, so very similar to the, the charger in the image, uh, chargers at a city facility. Um, we feel pretty good about uh, from scoring criteria and things that we should be competitive. It's a pretty small, relatively small grant. It's $158,000. They think that that'll fund about 45 chargers. So that's why you're not seeing 150 chargers. We just, uh, we think that this is a, will be a good approach. And then finally, as we build new facilities, we are building charging infrastructure. So for example, the east side storage and maintenance facility, when it is built, will have enough charging capacity for what's going there today and looking forward. So it's a really good opportunity to kind of build that in as part of our, part of our projects. I mentioned the city's green fleet uh, policy. So this policy was approved by the council in 2010. Um, kind of the policy statement it makes is that it is our city goal to minimize greenhouse gas emissions of current and future fleet vehicles. That policy works. Uh, the two screen captures on the slide reflect uh, recognition from outside agencies that we have a city, a green fleet. We have an honorable mention award and we are a tier three sustainable fleet. We're accredited from um, National Fleet Management Association. We have started the process of updating that policy. It's a really good opportunity because we have uh, a lot of different representation from around the city, from the uh, sustainability office, from user departments to update this policy and bring it back to city council. Um, and it's a good 
it provides Fleet, in many ways, a framework for having the conversations with customers about how we're gonna transition our fleet to be as green as possible. Our goal right now is uh, quarter one, 2019 um, update. On the topic of actually converting, so moving from a pilot program into conversions, um, we are in that early adopter phase, we are having some success uh, getting people to um, sign up for electric vehicles. There is this kind of coordination with the charging side. That's actually one of the limiting things, and that's why it's exciting that these two action items are coming, because I think that's going to get some more electric vehicles into our fleet. Uh, but in the meantime, we are working on the conversion plan. So there's, uh, in the fleet study, there was a scenario four which talked about maximizing total benefits. So that that included fuel savings, operational savings, but also factoring in the carbon savings um, of a conversion. And that's kind of, I think, the baseline approach we want to take with um, some other assumptions that are really important. And they are uh, learned from other cities that have gone through and are adding more electric vehicles to their fleet, one of which is engaging customers early and getting their support. Um, I've been told by Al if our customers want to, Al Thunberg, fleet director, uh, we don't want our customers to be in a position where they want to prove us wrong, that this won't work and we'll show you why it won't work. So we want to really build that support and that's going to be really important. Um, using telematics, so when you look at maximizing total, maximizing total benefits, uh, we have uh, access to data. Uh, we have more than we had two years ago. We have vehicle telematics that will tell us how much vehicles are being used and how much savings that we can anticipate from making a conversion and that ties into leveraging operating savings um, when we move from a ford focus to something that's electric there's an upfront capital cost that we save money over time and so that's a that's a conversation we need to figure out a way financially to tap into those savings over time to help uh, make the conversions happen as quickly as possible So next steps, again, uh, from this point forward, we are gonna continue the charging station efforts and pursue outside funding opportunities. There for sure will be a second round of VW grants coming out in uh, probably, I think, 20, 2020. Uh, so we want to be ready that planning and kind of uh, initial analysis about where we need chargers and how much really sets us up to be quickly jump on those opportunities. As I mentioned, we'll have an update of the Green Fleet Policy in quarter one of 2019. We will continue to uh, have the conversations and work with our customers about where it makes sense to get electric vehicles into their operations. And we will continue uh, the conversion phase planning, which kind of is one of the overarching things because that does bring in uh, customers, that brings in the charging side, and that brings in the vehicle side. Um, and that will continue as we hopefully move towards uh, a charging system and uh, a plan that will allow us to just move from early adopter to a full conversion plan. With that, thank you. I'm happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> any questions for the staff presentation? Councilmember Fletcher. Uh, thanks for this. I'm very excited to see this moving forward and. Uh, really appreciate the thought that's going into it. Can you elaborate a little more? I, um, we've been talking at the Clean Energy Partnership, particularly around this goal of electrification and uh, around really trying to um, create opportunities for the city and Excel to partner on making that happen. Can you elaborate a little bit more on the ways that Excel is participating in this and the way you all are working together? Uh, Mr. Chair, Council Member Fletcher, I will, uh, yes, I'll, I'll take a shot. So. Um, Excel reached out to me, I think right around uh, after we presented the, the study last fall and said, we're really excited about what you're thinking about. We'd like to hear how we can help. Um, and one of the ways that, or one of the barriers for us is just cost of both vehicles and then of the charging side infrastructure. So the conversation moved pretty quickly to um, the charging opportunities and you know, I think 
they were thinking about how they could step into this and help all of their customers. And because we were thinking about it and kind of demonstrated that we're pretty serious, um, their make ready pilot program really reduces some of the costs that we would, if we just went out and did it today, that we would incur. And Excel is willing to, um, because we share these benefits, um, is willing to bear some of those costs. And again, it's not just been public works and fleet talking to them, sustainability office is part of those conversations. And I think we all are, are really excited about this. Thank you. Councilmember Gordon. Is the, um, the Volt the only electric, fully electric vehicle that we use right now? Uh, Mr. Chair, Council Member Gordon, um, Mr. Thumberg will kick me if I'm wrong on this, but we have the three Chevy Bolts um, that are in the fleet. We have a, what is affectionately known as the juice box, uh, a Ford Transit Connect van that is being used kind of as a parts running vehicle. Um, and I think that's it for the, it for the on-road vehicles. Um, I think, yes, yeah, so to answer your question, that, that's what okay. we have. So there is a van. Yes. And one of the slides mentioned an SUV. Is there actually a um, an, an fully electric SUV now that would serve some of our needs that we're looking at, or we're just anticipating it in the next few years? Mr. Chair, Council Member Gordon, it is my sincere hope that as we talk to our customers, that uh, the Chevy Bolt is bigger than you might expect. And there are actually some kind of built out cargo style options um, that will be available, are available, that we're going to, uh, we'd like to get our hands on and start getting it out so that it could, we wouldn't replace a, a Ford Escape two wheel drive with a, an electric Ford Escape. We would maybe be able to replace that with something like with a Chevy Bolt. Okay. Thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments? for the presentation. Um, seeing none, well, uh, thank you for this work. Uh, it's a pretty significant step as we move forward to our very ambitious uh, but, but goals that, that we needed to set out and mark. Uh, and now we're marching forward. And I think just knowing that you're on the assignment means that we're taking it seriously. Problems will be uh, identified and solved. And implementation is being taken quite seriously by this department and all the other ones that are affected. And we shouldn't lose sight on that. And I think this um, presentation really highlights how multi-department uh, this actually is. And there's many, many different components other than just focusing on the vehicle. It's really a whole system of both the human resource side and the sort of infrastructure uh, energy supply side. So you're engaging on both fronts. And uh, I appreciate the update. Look forward to the 2019 plan, which will be pretty darn exciting and probably unique for municipalities of our size. So with that, um, I will uh, move item 16 as submitted. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Dissenting name, that carries. Thank you. And um, Mr. Letter. Chair, I believe there's an action. I'll be embarrassed if I'm wrong here, but I believe that it's not a receive and file, but mm -hmm. it is authorizing uh, an MOU yeah, that's with Excel. Why. Did that's, we do that? Yeah, that's why I stated it generically. We will move the action okay. items in 16. My apologies, Mr. That's Chair. Okay. <laughs> that way I could cover all three in one swoop with a very generic language. See that technique? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty good. All right. So I think we are adjourned. <laughs>